Hi YouTube! Today I have a different video for you guys regarding Sinistry Charts. Now before I get started, I do want to mention that I am 17 years old. This is an advice video, so if you don't, if you think that age defines maturity and all that stuff, then you may not want to watch this. Um, I also, I know a lot of my viewers are older than me, so I have a Sag and Pluto, so my views about relationship and synastries and all of that stuff may be a little bit different. The age of Aquarius, you know, I have my Uranus and Neptune and Aquarius, so all my outer planets are Gemini, Aquarius, and Gemini, Aquarius, and Sagittarius. So my generation's views of love and relationships are a lot different than someone that has their Pluto in Scorpio or their Pluto in Libra or so on and so forth. But I feel as if there are valuable lessons that I've learned in love ever since I've started um, researching astrology and researching synastry and delving deep into souls and our soul purposes and all of that. And Uranus right now is in the sign of Taurus. So I definitely think that there are valuable lessons that may help you as a person, but just take all those things into consideration before you value my opinion because everybody has different perspectives on love everybody is different every generation is going to carry different energies and the way that we interplay with each other but every generation every pluto every pluto generation can actually learn a lot from each other so this i was driving late last night it was like one in the morning and i was reflecting on a past relationship it was never really a relationship it was a cat and mouse game I played for like three years that actually sparked my interest in astrology because once I started getting into astrology I looked at my chart and then I looked at the person I liked chart and then I looked at our sinister chart and then I became really obsessed with it I became really obsessed with the deep subconscious and the energetic relationships and all of this stuff and I started to try to define something and I tried to put in these put define the relationship that wasn't even there and I tried to so hard convince myself that I loved someone and they loved me but the reason that we weren't together is because of all of these traumatic things and all of yada 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 these soul karmic lessons and all that and there was a huge soul karmic lesson and I realized this as I was driving and I was like I need to make a video of this because I've been getting a lot of sinistry requests and I enjoy reading sinistry and something that I've learned about sinistry and astrology in general is to take it with a grain of salt because people who people get into astrology and they use it for the wrong purposes they use it and they try to define who they are and they will stick to that definition if you have a moon in aries you will stick to that definition if you have venus in the eighth house you will stick to that definition and a lot of times that can stunt personal growth because you spend your life trying to figure out who you are by what your planets and your aspects tell you and you won't grow because you're like oh I do this because I'm this sign I do this because of this and I do this and and it it kind of stunts personal growth and um more revelations and moving on with your life because you're so stuck of like oh my astrology chart when is when is this going to happen in my life when am I going to do this will I be good at this? Will I have kids? Will I find a partner? Who's my soulmate? We get stuck on these questions and we get stuck on wanting to know, on wanting to define every little thing in our lives. And a lot of us, a lot of people that are into astrology are smart and they learn quickly and they're intellectual minds. But the problem with intellectual minds that overanalyze everything is this obsessive behavior that a lot of us have. And it's to get stuck and to overanalyze and to think and to research and to spend so much of our time and energy onto other people. This is about synastry, so I'm not going to focus so much on the individual self as I am on the relationship aspect of things. So we spend our time overanalyzing and trying to define and chasing and obsessing over someone while we are losing our self-worth. We're losing our dignity when we do those things 
in our lives. And we actually are cutting ourselves off to other people that might be better for us. We're cutting ourselves off of opportunities because when you do that, when you obsess over one person, when you obsess over your karmic soulmate or whatever you want to call it, your twin flame and whatever you want to define it as, when you obsess over that one person and you spend so much time convincing yourself that they're the person that you're meant to be with, you isolate anything else because you're asking the universe you're like oh my god this is my person this is the only thing i care about this is the only thing i'm putting my energy into this is the only thing i'm putting my time this is the only thing i love this is the only person for me and that person may not even be for you but you're like trying to convince yourself that that person is for you so you spend all your time and energy into trying to define this relationship trying to define your partner trying to define love trying to define so, what a soulmate is. You you spend so much time over analyzing. And what you're doing is actually spiraling yourself down. And a lot of people that have asked me for readings in regards to synastry have even if they don't tell me this, I know that they have analyzed their chart. I know they know. I know they know what their relationship is. I know they know the energies in their relationships because like I said, people that are into astrology and are into synastry aren't dumb. I know you guys aren't dumb. You know what I mean? So then you were contacting me and asking me for reassurance and I'm more than willing to give you this, but I wanted to put this information out there so that you can grow as a person. This isn't to put you down and this, this video isn't to say that you're never going to find love and all of that stuff. This is a video that I've decided to make because these thought processes and all of this have helped me grow. And I have been in that point in my life when I was 15 and 16 years old, and I spent so much time chasing after love. And the reason why I was doing that and the reason people obsess over their synastry chart is because they haven't defined themselves outside of their birth chart or they haven't loved themselves. So now they're seeking validation through someone else. They're seeking the intense bond with someone else because they themselves have not formulated that intense bond with themselves or that intense love and self-confidence and that dignity and their sole purpose. They haven't, they haven't searched for that. So when you search for that in someone else, you're not going to attract that because if you don't love yourself and if you don't value yourself and if you are throwing yourself at someone constantly when you know they don't love you that's the thing if you have to if you're second guessing it there's one thing to ask me for a synastry chart and be like hey this is my new relationship can you please tell me about it what is this going on i don't understand how to read this that's why i have the synastry readings is to help people navigate their relationships it's not to help you obsess over your relationship you know what i mean it's not to help you obsess and tell you that your car your relationship is so deep and it's so spiritual and you're binded because of your past lives and all of that and even though i believe in past lives and i believe that we can meet people in this life that we have known before I do believe that karmic relationships, they're not meant to last. That's the whole point of karmic relationships. They don't last. They're meant to teach us something. And I feel like people learn the lesson, but they stay stuck or they stay stuck and they don't want to learn the lesson. And the lesson is always going to teach you about yourself, about your love style, about what you really want in love and what you need in a relationship and what your soul purpose is. People that make connections to our eighth house and people that make connection to our north node or our south node or all of this stuff, it's like they're just here to treat you like shit so that you realize your self-worth and that you realize that there's more to life and you realize your soul purpose, whatever that may be. And you're meant to, you're more than a relationship. You don't need a relationship to define you and you don't need another person to define you. Actually, a lot of the times that person that you're obsessing about isn't for you. And that's the thing. Nobody is meant for us. Nobody is ours. We are all individual souls with soul purposes. Now, soulmates and twin flames, whatever you may call it, whatever thing is that happens, people who are 
who value themselves, people that respect their bodies and they don't let people have sex, random people have sex with them, people that respect themselves and put their soul's purpose first and spend a lot of time uh, thinking about who they are and all of this and learning their lessons and just trying to get the most out of life, trying to gain the most experiences. Those people will align with people that are very similar. You see, uh, marriage for each generation is very different, you know what I mean? So there's the Pluto generation, which I believe are millennials, that love the idea of sticking. And then there's my generation, where it's all about technology and being independent, and Generation X is... Uh, all independent and we don't know how to love each other we don't know what relationships are and it's because we're not meant to do that like my generation is a very innovative generation and a very independent generation where it's all about self it's all about me it's all about I and what I can do how much money I can make so this is why this perspective might help you but what was I saying so you don't own anyone and nobody belongs to you. So get that out of your head. That person doesn't belong to you. That person's their own soul. That person's their own soul with their own mission and their own purpose in life. So stop trying to tie them down. Someone that will want to be with you will be with you. And you will not need a sinistry chart to tell you that that person is meant to be with you and grow with you as a person. You know, we spend, we spend so much time obsessing about love and the idea of love and the idea of marriage when there's so much more to life than that love love is fleeting love is in the moment love comes a certain person will come into your life when you're vibrating at that frequency the person that you need will come to you when you need them and a lot of marriages and stuff aren't working out nowadays you know there's a 50 percent divorce rate and it's increasing in the united states of america and that is because we haven't defined ourselves as individuals before we have fallen in love and gotten into a marriage. We haven't discovered our soul purpose. And you can be a circle and the person can be a circle when you guys meet each other. So you think that you're soulmates and you think that you're meant to be so you get married. But throughout the years, you may change into a square and they may still be a circle. And you'll realize that, oh my God, like we're not we're not compatible anymore. And it's because people are constantly growing. People are constantly changing their opinions, their beliefs, and what they want to do with in their lives. And as you grow as a person, you realize that you'll leave people behind and you'll move on with your life and you'll find new people. And your soul can't do that when it's like binded to somebody, you know? And it's very important that before you marry someone, that you know who you are or at least have a general idea and before you marry that person that you understand them and you won't be able to understand someone in a year in two years in three years nah man the person that you're meant to be with and the person that you want to marry marriage is so secular marriage is so defined it's something that we created and that was needed many generations ago when it came to um the, the women being supported and all that stuff and the money and the family and the children and all that stuff, marriage was needed for that, you know? But now we're coming into such an era where everything changes so fast and everybody is so individual and everybody is moving so fast pace. You know what I mean? There's so many people nowadays that you can meet someone across the world and think that they're your soulmate, like, you know? Or you can meet someone next to you and think that they're your soulmate, someone that you grew up with. So there's so many people and there's so many, I don't know what the frick I'm saying, there's so many people nowadays that it's like, soulmates is such a broad term. Because it's like, are they your soulmate? Or have you convinced yourself that they're your soulmate because you've isolated yourself into this confinement and you haven't really gone out in search for something greater, you know? So it's very important to not become so obsessed because you're actually wasting time doing that. What is meant to be yours will be yours. What is meant for you will be you. What loves you will be attracted to you, you know? And it's like, if you haven't loved yourself yet, don't even 
don't even think about getting in a relationship. Don't even think about having someone else in your life. If you haven't defined yourself, and you don't even have to have yourself completely defined, but if you haven't done some deep soul searching and you haven't done half the things in life that you want to do, don't even go search for a relationship right now because your soul doesn't need that. What your soul needs is for you to give it some direction on its life path. And that's why I value astrology and that's what I value synastry and all of that because it can tell you your birth chart can tell you kind of what you're meant to do in your life and how you can reach it and how you go about things it's not going to tell you who you are it tells you how you deal with the world around you how you deal with people how you deal with your emotions it's it's never going to tell you who you are you define who you are you know what I mean it, it's like it gives you characteristics and it gives you qualities and it gives you Astrology gives you these tools that you need to unlock who you are. And if you don't use those tools and, and you just think that's who you are and you if don't ever think someone you, that you know someone. I don't care how well you know astrology and I don't care how much time you spent researching the signs and the zodiacs and the houses and all of this stuff. You will never know someone because psychological behaviors, I, I know that astrology can tell you about how you were raised and all of this stuff, but you also have to look at the person's psychology and what their interests are, who they are as a person, like their hobbies and their goals in life and all of that stuff. Because a lot of the times you don't know someone, you think you do, but that's a very ego mindset, thinking that you know someone and that you can read them and you know all of these things. I, I, I refuse to look at astrology now as who I am. Because it's like, I can't define myself. And I decided this when I was reading my Pisces moon. And it was like, Pisces are empathetic and they're this and they're that. And they're creative and they're imaginative. And it's like, yeah, but I also have moments where I'm very selfish. And I don't, I'll have moments where it's like, I don't even feel. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I have no emotions. And it's like, that's not true. Like, you know, and there's, it's like, Pisces moons need relationships and all of this stuff. And it's like, that's not true because I've always worked best when I'm not in a relationship. And they're like, Tauruses are afraid of change and all of this stuff. And I was like, but I love change. Like I need change and I, I need new experiences. So you'll find yourself in conflict if you really try to search for yourself like you know what I mean so it's important to take astrology with a grain of salt and your birth chart with a grain of salt you're here if if astrology told you about your relationship and what your relationship and who your soulmate is and who you are there'd be no purpose in life there wouldn't because it's like what's the point of trying to figure yourself out if you can just look on cafe astrology and be like oh this is who I am like, there's nothing more to me that's very superficial, in my opinion. You can't just take things for surface value. And those toxic relationships that you guys are getting yourself into, that you think, it's like, stop. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. It, it, you don't own anybody. And to think that you do is very selfish. It's very selfish to obsess over someone. It's very selfish to try to manifest them into your life. I know there are people out there that will use the law of attraction for the wrong reasons. It is very selfish of you to use the law of attraction or use your abilities because eighth house people, 12th house people, all, all the people with Pluto and deep aspects, you know what I mean? will use their powers, their energetic powers, to manifest someone into their life. And let me tell you, you will manifest that person into your life, but you won't manifest who you need them to be. They're still gonna be their person. You can't change someone. I want you to think about how hard it is to change your behaviors and your actions and your thought processes, okay? How hard is that for you? Now, how hard, it, now imagine how hard it is for you to try to change someone else. Now, I also want you to think about how hard it may be to love yourself. If it's hard for you to love yourself, I don't know why you think it would be a okay thing to try to make someone else love you. You know, it, it doesn't work like that. You know, people are their own person. People 
will be in a relationship if they want to be in a relationship with you. So stop thinking about all of these Pluto aspects that you have with people, all of these watery feelings that you have and all of this. Because like I said before, you don't know someone and you don't know how they feel. You don't know. Because you may feel, you may convince yourself after reading all of this stuff that it, the relationship is a lot deeper than it is. And then someone that doesn't know astrology, like let's say like your synastry partner, doesn't know anything about astrology. You know what I mean? They're not going to feel that. You know, they may or they may not, but that's the whole point. You don't know. So it's like you're just digging yourself into a hole because you're trying to explain how they feel about you when in reality, if they wanted to tell you how they would feel about you, they would. It's that easy. And if you're in an abusive relationship, an emotionally manipulative relationship, what are you doing? What you are doing is that you're saying that to the universe this is why you're going to get stuck there. Because I believe in manifestation. I believe in the law of attraction. And I take it very seriously. And now, now I'm at a point in my life that I've realized that everything that I have in my life, every experience I've had, I've attracted it. And the thing is, is this, is that when you get into those relationships and stuff, and when you try so hard to manifest someone, that's all you're going to attract. Is that negative, abusive, manipulative behavior. And it's not healthy. I don't care how many deep aspects you have. Abuse, manipulation, power struggles aren't healthy. What they are is a lesson for you to learn. They, it's a lesson for you to gain back your power. It's a lesson for you to understand that you need to love yourself and that you you have all of these beautiful loving energy so why are you putting it towards someone that doesn't love you or give you the time of day you know and it's like it's such a basic basic concept but at times we refuse to believe it we lie to ourselves we lie and tell ourselves that we need someone and that this person's destined for us when in reality they're not they were attracted into your life and for a reason, a reason that you won't let go of, and now you want to hold them, it's not right. It's not right to do that. I don't really like that.